everybody. Welcome to the Stock Market Morning Prep video for Monday, May 19th. Well, we did get the shenanigans that the uh, market makers uh, were going to do, and that's exactly what happened on Friday on monthly options expiration. Uh, we all kind of knew it, and you can see here on the five-minute spider chart that we did absolutely nothing all day. The last hour, we popped up a little bit uh, for the first 15 minutes of that last hour and then really didn't do much going into the close. So... Uh, a pretty subdued day, very, very slow, no volume, and that's what the market makers wanted to um, have. Uh, puts and call options expire worthless at certain levels, uh, like we talked about. I believe it was on the Thursday video. So now that we have that out of the way, where do we go from here? Well, I do think that we resume the downtrend. We have a small downtrend right now. As we all know, the IWMs and the Qs are leading the way lower, where the S&P and the uh, Dow Jones and the transports, for that matter, are um, staying elevated at all-time highs. Now, the transports, as we know, are the leaders, right, of the five that we follow, where the laggards are the S&P and the Dow Jones. And they are holding up relatively well. Um, but uh, I had mentioned many times, uh, and, and I think it was last week's video, that if you were trading in 2008, 9, and back in 2000, uh, what led the market lower before the crash was the Russell 2000 and, of course, the NASDAQ. So um, we have the same history uh, and the same pattern. So if history repeats itself, we should continue lower. I'm not saying a market crash, but again, uh, some sort of a correction of um, 8 to 10, maybe 12% would be ideal because that would unwind a lot of this overbought reading and this nervousness in the marketplace where the markets can resume and close higher on the year. Um, the long-term picture looks great, but the short-term picture is just crazy. The price action has been ridiculous, um, and you know, tr trading back and forth, uh, you really have to pick your your spot. Um, and swing trading is very, very difficult right now because the, uh, your positions are moving from one end to another uh, in a matter of minutes. And uh, and then once the market does move lower, let's just say if you're long, um, and then re and the market recovers, meaning the indices, the stocks really don't recover. They stay subdued pretty much the rest of the day after that market moved against you. Um, so you're kind of fighting an uphill battle at the moment. So take a, a, a few less swing positions and try to day trade the market the best, po best way possible until this market gets easy again, okay? So let's go right into the charts. What I want to show you is um, right now, um, I think, again, aside from... Uh, Friday, thank God Friday's price action is gone and behind us. Now the markets are free to do what it wants to do. And watch the VIX here. As you see, we have uh, positive divergence in the stochastics. Not quite in the MACD, but watch that trend line break higher. And look what's happening with the Bollinger Bands. We have the outside Bollinger Bands. Plus, we are at the lows of the VIX, uh, right around 12-ish. When you have extreme complacency, uh, as a contrarian, you want to be careful because we usually get an explosive move to the upside. Not saying it's going to happen today, but definitely keep an eye on that. Now, if we do have a risk-off type of environment, um, watch the gold. I mean, gold here is in a precarious situation. We have a symmetrical triangle right in the middle of the big move on a daily chart, so not so great. But remember, the symmetrical triangle doesn't tell you which way it wants to go, break down or break out to the upside. So um, I would wait for the break and then follow um, price action on gold. And I think gold's going to break higher. The way the market is looking um, uh, to more and more to the downside, the more I feel gold will, will, will put on that bid for a risk trade, uh, a safety trade, safe haven trade uh, to the upside. Uh, and again, it would be short-lived uh, because gold in a bigger picture is in a downtrend and is still in the bear market here, remember. The 8 to 21 crossed over back in 2001, and we have been in a bull market ever since until just recently, uh, the end of 2000. Uh, I think uh, beginning of 2013, we crossed back to the downside, and we've been in a bear market ever since. Okay, so the bigger picture is um, is still lower until it breaks back above um, on the monthly chart. But the, the short-term picture, I could see an easy move of uh, you know 60, 70. Uh, points in gold to the upside, at least even challenge this high here, okay? So uh, keep an eye on gold. I'm watching gold. Um, I'm watching a couple of sectors. I'm not putting out the sector watch at the moment. I want to concentrate on more of the indices um, on where we're headed. Once we get a true direction, then we can play more of the sector charts, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've um, kind of stepped aside on that for the last week or so because I just want to concentrate on 
which way this market seems to be headed, okay? Uh, now let's take a look at um, the ZB. And what I did was, uh, as you know, we have an inverted head and shoulders um, here, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Uh, head and shoulders target comes out to 142.27 in the bonds. And what I did do is I took an easy low to high from, um, from here to this previous low. I got a 1272 extension for the next target. And what's uh, and if you look at the 1618, it coincides perfectly, perfectly, right to the tick of the uh, head and shoulders pattern target of the, uh, in, sorry, the inverted head and shoulders pattern. So um, this is perfect. This is actually lines up perfectly to where this bigger picture target would be uh, on the head and sh in the inverted head and shoulders target. And remember, um, something weird is going on. We have yields continue to drop. Bonds continue to be well bid. They are the smartest guys in the room when it comes to investing. You have to take note of this. This is not uh, anything um, to write home about here. This is serious stuff. And I think that bonds are, are in a short squeeze. Uh, um, we looked at the uh, commitment of traders reports uh, last week. And bonds are heavily shorted by the crowd. When I mean the crowd, the retail crowd. Uh, because it's been working for so long. I think bonds have started a short squeeze. And I think that the bonds are starting to move higher. Um, into that, uh, into these two extensions. And if we see the bonds continue to move higher, what's going to happen? We're going to have money come out of equities. There's no two ways about it, okay? So just be careful here. If you're a longer-term investor, while the VIX is so cheap, it's okay to buy protection to ride out that storm, you know? All right, now let's take a look at the uh, Japanese yen. As you can see, Japanese yen, again, spot yen, well bid, inversely correlated. We have an inverted head and shoulders. Um, and what I'll do tomorrow is I will put a Fibonacci extension to see where we are, where our targets would be. Now, remember, the next hurdle is going to be this cluster right here and the 200-day moving average. But if we take that out with a vengeance, guys, I'm telling you, um, I I'd say watch out below. Again, with uh, yen and bonds moving higher and VIX at the lows, it's just a recipe for a nice big move to the downside. Okay, And again, we're on that seasonal time of year where the markets are vulnerable to any type of a small correction. And again, I'm talking about a correction. I'm not talking about a crash, okay? Um, next, in the ES, uh, we are down now, as you can see, nine handles. So what happened from Friday's big move at the end of the day to now? Well, pretty much, again, market makers want to keep this mar a market elevated, especially on an options expiration monthly. So um, there you have it, okay? So now we had weakness at least going into the opening. We'll see what happens today if the market gets bid up. But if we continue to move lower and we close um, pretty much on its lows or near the lows, then I think you'll have some follow-through weakness for the rest of the week, and then we'll have to reevaluate. But again, 1272 extension continues to hold. Uh, we have the 1618 as well at the 918, so that would be the next target. Uh, but if we start to break down here, um, your first target would be this uptrend line from the November 2012 low. That was the election year um, <clears throat> back then. Next would be the Dow Jones. Um, Dow Jones Industrial, you can see these are all times that we made new highs and we sold off. We made new highs and sold off. Okay, so now um, Friday we did have a little bit of a bounce. But remember, testing the 50-day moving average now in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. All right, so we're coming into some weakness here. So let's keep an eye on that. That was, again, helping us uh, with the bigger picture. Transports, our main leader. This is the leader, and it's actually holding up quite well. And this is what's, uh, it, what's really um, disturbing is that while the markets are moving up, we have volume moving lower. Okay, uh, We have sell-offs that come in with heavier volume. You can see the distribution days are extremely high, uh, where we have accumulation days extremely low. So we had no volume on Friday, yet the markets were uh, had, had hold up pretty well. So again, guys, just a word of caution here. Be careful. Um, we have we have market divergence here. Now look at the key, uh, the IWMs. This is not a bullish chart to say the least, right? We're below the 200 EMA, SMA. We're below the 8, the 20, the 34, the 50. We have a downtrend channel here. We have a descending triangle, and we're just barely clinging on to this 108.50. If we lose this, now hey, let's. Let's put a target. We, if we take out Thursday's low of 187.46, right here, Thursday's low, I think you're going to see a big flush in the Russell. Okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Lastly is the Qs. Now we had this downtrend channel, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we broke out of it. And what this is forming is just another wedge, uh, another bearish rising wedge. Now remember, it's only bearish when it breaks, but look out for Friday's low here, guys. Um, pretty much match Thursday's low. So 
really uh, Friday's low comes in, uh, Thursday's low actually, and Friday comes in at 86.55, which held. Uh, that's where we're going to need to see this market break lower for a uh, continued move to the downside, okay? Hope it helps. Um, be careful out there. Remember, uh, be selective in your trading. Reduce your swing trading perspective until the markets have thrown in a towel and that we are headed lower. Then you can start selling rallies and hold. Um, but, you know, take a couple of bearish uh, p uh, positions. It's okay to do so. You're just going to have to, you know, go through the uh, ups and downs, the pops in the markets uh, intraday. But the market should roll over. Uh, it looks like it wants to. Uh, but again, let's let price tell us what to do. But it's okay if you wanted to take a couple of bearish um, trades uh, as long as the technicals are telling you to do so. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great day. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.